Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We're going to be writing a lambda function in Dart which will be responsible for generating image quotes. So this is what it looks like. Here is an image quote that has been generated by our lambda function. When I reload this page, another image quote is generated. So let's get into it. I've gone ahead and set up a Dart project with the following packages and over here under the bin directory, we have an example of a Lambda function called Hello API Gateway, which takes in two arguments, the context of the current operation and the event that was triggered. And over here, we are registering this function as a handler and we've given it this name here. And then we call the invoke method, at which point our runtime will be listening for incoming events. And the response here is say map object, which will be converted into JSON. And we are using the following factory constructor to build our response. Okay, so we're going to deploy this to AWS Lambda and actually get it running. The first step to deploying on AWS Lambda is to generate a binary from our dark code and deploy that binary. Since it's going to be running in a Linux environment, we essentially need to run the Dart compile command in a Linux environment. Fortunately, we can use Docker to do that. So running the following command spins up an interactive shell in the Linux environment, at which point our directory, it's accessible in this environment. Next step is we run pubget to update our packages, followed by our Dart compile command. And the name of the file we want to produce is bootstrap. Okay, so that is successful. We see the file over here. So now we can exit our container. And then from that, we need to generate a zip file. I'll call it lambda.zip. And then the name of this file will be bootstrap. And then we can deploy that to AWS. But in order to do that, we need to create our Lambda function. So I'll come over to AWS. Under our Lambda functions, I'll create a new function. I'll author on from scratch. I'll give it a function name under the runtime. I'll scroll down to custom runtime and select provide your own bootstrap. Also creating this Lambda function will create an IAM role with this name with the permission to upload logging information to Amazon CloudWatch. So that's something to be aware of. Everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and create the function. Now that the function is created, I can upload our zip file. Click on upload. Select our zip, hit save. Also, we need to confirm that the handler is matching. So I'll edit that. And I believe we called it API Gateway. Let me double check. Yeah, that's right, API Gateway. Okay, I'll save that. At this point, we should be able to test. We are asked to create a new test event. I'll give it a name. I'll leave everything else as is. We're not doing much with it now. I'll create and let's run the test. All right, so running the test now gives us the following response. So we can confirm that our Lambda function is working. It has logged out the request ID that we retrieved from the context as defined here. So that looks good so far. And now we can move on to implementing our actual image generator. And let me just run dart pub get again to update our dependencies. I'll go on ahead and create a new file called main.dart. I'll import the relevant packages. I'll create my main function. And then in here, we need to make a call to retrieve our quotes. And we are going to be working with the Forestmatic API, which is this one here. What this API essentially does is it provides us with quotes. So we make a call to this endpoint and then we specify the method, the format we want, which will be JSON and the language, which will be English. Fortunately, this API is free to use. It doesn't require you to get an access token. You can access it directly. And here is an example of using the API. So every time I refresh, I get a new quote, including a quote author as well. So I'll copy this. And let's make a call to retrieve the quotes. I'll start with a try catch block, and then we can make our call by doing http.get. We'll do uri.pass, and then we'll pass our URL like so. And then in our response, I'll print out the body. And in case there's an error, let's just print out the error. So let's test this out. 
Okay, perfect. So we've got our quote text, we've got our quote author. We need to retrieve the actual quote text. Let's JSON decode it by doing JSON.decode our body. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, good. I noticed earlier on in testing this API that, that in the JSON response, it escaped single quotes, which means that JSON.decode throws an exception. So in order to mitigate that, in the quote response, I remove all backslash characters. There's probably a better way of doing this, but I remove backslashes for now. And then we JSON decode rest text, which should still work for us. Okay, awesome. So at this point, we can move to writing the logic to generate our quote. Let's also import the image package. We'll create an image object, let's say 300 by 300. We'll fill the image with a background color and then we'll display our quote by invoking the draw string method. So we'll pass in the image object. We need to set a font. We need to set the X and Y offset and then the actual string. So let's do that. So I'll just do 10 by 10 and then we'll pass in our quote text. We can encode this as a PNG image. And for now, let's write this out to the file system. So I'll import .il. Then I'll do a wait file quote.png, write as bytes, pass in our PNG object. So let's try this out. So we got our quote PNG file here. Let me click on that. This is the quote that it returns, but then the quote is displayed on a single line, which means that it's going past the image width. So drawing the string draws the string as is, it does not take into account the width of the image that we wish the string to be drawn in. So this means that we need to write some logic, which will essentially measure the length of each of these words. And when a word goes past the width of this image, we will shift that to the next line. Might sound more confusing than it is, but once you see the implementation, hopefully should be easy to understand. All right, so under lib image quote generator, I'm gonna create a new function taken in the following parameters. So this will be our font, the quote, the width of the content area, and the padding. The first thing we're gonna do is to retrieve each word from the quote. So essentially we'll get an array of words. Next, I'll need to know the width of the space character, which will be used in the calculations we're doing later on. And next I'll create this final variable, which will hold our list of strings that we'll be building shortly. We'll have our line width and we'll have a string buffer, which we'll be using in our looping function, which means that next we'll be having our looping function. We are looping over the words. We'll retrieve the word. We need to check the width of the word itself, which involves measuring the widths of each of the characters in that word and summing it up. So I'll create a new function. I'll retrieve the code units of each character, which returns an array of integers. And then I'll create this variable, which will store the full sum of the word. I'll loop over each of the characters. If this character unit does not exist in our font, we'll just skip the current iteration and move on to the next one. Or else we'll update our word length by summing up the width of each character. And then we'll just return our word length. Okay, so we can use this here like so. And now that we've got our word width, we need to check if the line width plus our word width is less than the content width minus our padding. And in this case, we need to multiply our padding by two. So for instance, if the padding is set to 10, then it will be 10 on the left side and 10 on the right side. So that would be 20 overall. So essentially, if the current line width value and the width of the current word can still fit on the same line within this content box calculated width, then we will write this word to our current string buffer and then update our line width or else we'll add the words we've written to our buffer so far to our lines. We'll pass the current word to a new string buffer object and then we'll reset our line width to the width of the current word, which means that we started writing to our next line. And once this is done, we can return our lines. All right, so let's try using this. I'll import image quote generator. And then over here, before we instantiate our image objects, let's have our font, the variable. I'll get the font's line height and I'll add some extra height to it, 
we'll invoke our format quote lines function, our content width are set to 300, and our padding are set to 10 on each side. Let me just print out lines. Okay, that's given an error. So let's come back here and we want the quote text rather. So let's try that again. All right, so we got that. However, the quote text shows all of that. We're not getting the rest, which is this bit. Then do what you have to do. We need to add another check over here because when this logic runs for the final set of words, it's not added to our list. So we need to have a check in here. If it's the last word, then we need to add our current string builder value to our list. If I run this again, okay so we got that now that we got our list of lines we can write this out which means we can do without this one i have a for loop over here we'll invoke the draw string method passing our image object the font our x position and then on the y position will be the padding but then we need to add the line height or else all the letters will be on top of each other and then followed by the actual text. And I just noticed that I haven't defined the padding. So let's define that here. I can pass the padding here. And in fact, let's see what this looks like. Okay, let's see our quote. All right, awesome. That looks good now. We need to adjust the height of this image so that it fits directly around the quote itself. We need to calculate the image height. And we'll do that by taking the line height and we'll multiply that by the full length of lines and we can pass that here. Let's try that. So that looks good. Next, we need to display the quote author. To include the author, we need to adjust the height of this image. We need to do that by checking if there's an author, then we'll adjust the image height and I'll just make this a var and we need to draw our quote author onto the image and then we'll have the quote author. Let's try running this again. And let's see our quotes. Let's see what we did wrong. Oh wait, actually we didn't do anything wrong because there is no quote author. So I'll run this again. Okay, so now we go a quote author and there we go. Okay, so we've got our image generation script ready. Next, we need to prepare it for our lambda function. I will have this full try catch block in a function. We'll call this function generate and I'll move all of this in there. And this function returns a string because rather than writing to the file system, we'll return a base64 string of our PNG image. So let's save that. And then when there is an error, for now we'll just return the error. And then we'll register our handler. We'll call it quote.generate and then we'll call invoke like we did in the earlier example. So let's save this and let's go ahead and deploy it. We'll launch our Docker container. We'll do a pub get in the container and then we'll compile our binary and then we'll exit. We'll generate our zip file. We can either upload it to AWS via the web app or we can use the, we can use the AWS CLI. So I'll do AWS Lambda update function code. We'll specify the function name and then the zip file. All right, that should be deployed. We'll come back over here and also update the handler to reflect the new handler we specified. So let's test this out. Okay, awesome. We got our response back, which is this huge base64 string. In order to make this image quote generator accessible by the public, we need to connect this to API Gateway, which will create an endpoint for us. Normally, we can add a trigger here, but because we are returning binary data as a response, we need to configure this directly within API Gateway itself. So I'll go over to API Gateway. I'll create a new API. We'll make this a REST API. We'll give it a name and we'll leave everything else as is. And I'll go ahead and create the API. And then under Actions, 
we'll create a resource, we'll just call it quotes, and we'll enable course. Click on create resource, which gives us our quote endpoint with an options method that's been configured, which simply means that when the browser makes a pre-flight course request, the response sent back will contain the following, which allows the request to go through. So under our quote endpoint, we'll create a new method. This will be a get method. And then the integration type is a Lambda function. And then over here, we'll have the name of our Lambda function that we created. And we'll save, click OK. So now we need to configure our method response, expand this one, and then we'll add the content type header. And then over here, we'll modify this content type to be our PNG image. So it will be image slash PNG. We'll go back and we'll go to integration response, expand this one. And then under content handling, we want to convert to binary. And then under header mappings, we have our content type here and the value we are mapping to is image PNG. Make sure that the single quotes are not missed out or else it won't work. And let's go ahead and save that. And now let's deploy our API. For the deployment stage, we'll create a new stage, call it default and then deploy. Okay, so now it's been deployed. In fact, we could have tested it, I believe as well before we deployed it. So under get, we come to test and then we hit test and we see the response body gives us the actual binary PNG image. All right, so let's access this endpoint in the browser and it's slash quote, which gives us our quote. So if I refresh it, that gives us a new quote and so on and so forth. So this looks pretty good so far. It's worth mentioning that the image package also has functions for drawing images and shapes as well. So the background images can be highly customizable. So I'll encourage you to take a look at the API documentation for the image package and see if you can get creative with it. Also, we can improve this, for instance, by sending query parameters, and then we can use that to set the background color. So if we come over here to VS Code, and let me do a pub get quickly. So in our gateway event, we get a map containing the parameters that are passed in via query string. I might do this and push that onto GitHub so you can take a look at that. But that being said, this brings us to the end of the tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.